Hello and welcome to the Flix Forum podcast with Jesse Heater and MJ, where each week we go back and look at a Netflix original film in the order of release. This week we are checking out Netflix's 43rd film, the 2017 romantic comedy The Incredible Jessica James. It's directed by James C. Strauss, it stars Jessica Williams, Chris O'Dowd, Noel Wells, Lakeith Stanfield, Megan Ketch, and Sabrina Guevara. Hello. G'day, mate. Good, good, good evening. evening. Heath, evening. Jesse, good evening. It is good to be here. It's very good to be here. This is one of the one of the later here. podcasts we've done. We, we do tend to change up our podcasting yeah. time from time to time. It is quite late. It's a bit later in the night. It's almost my bedtime, but that's all right. I'll, I'll push, on, push on through. Very close. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so we like to uh, kick off our show with a fast flicks where we do a quick summary of the film. Peter, go today. All right. Still struggling after a breakup, an aspiring playwright meets and forms an unlikely, unlikely connection with a divorced man who is going through a similar struggle with his ex. Mm. Yeah, that's the story. That's it. MJ. Struggling to come to terms with a recent breakup, our title character stumbles across various situations and people that help her to relook at the way she's approaching her life. Nice. And I have said a young, creative girl wants to make it big in the theatre world, but must first come to terms with who she is. Mm. Yep, I like that. Yep. Mm. All right, so we like to have a look at anything that uh, we've found out about this film. I struggled this week. Yeah. Big struggle to find much about this uh, film at all. Online. Mm. MJ, did you find something? Uh, A few bits and pieces. Um... I was looking at uh, Jim Strauss, who is the director. Um, I wasn't familiar, familiar with him by name. This is the fourth feature that he's directed, so starting from 2007, so he does tend to space out his, his mm-hmm. work. But he also had nine writing credits mm. um, from 2005 onwards, um, but including a movie that I've given five stars to. Yeah, uh, I saw this and I was like, oh, oh, MJ's recommended which, this to us. Which I didn't know he'd, I didn't know he'd written it, but he, he wrote The Hollers, which is an excellent oh, okay. film. Um, oh, you think it's, that was oh, not where I was going. <laughs> yeah, I'll, get, I'll get to that. Um, a movie, The Hollers, which was a John Krasinski-directed film, um, which is, a, yeah, I, I rarely give a five-star rating to a film, but this is, this is one I gave five stars, so I didn't realise Jim Strauss had written that. What he also wrote was a sequence from New York, I Love You, which I have recommended to both That's of where you. I was going, yeah. Um, and that's, yeah, so he's, he's done some pretty cool stuff and stuff that's right up my alley. Um, mm. This is this, That's from a writing perspective. Obviously, he wrote and directed this one. So, um, yeah, you yeah. Said, so it's his fourth feature. He's done, in 2007, Grace is Gone. He did the winning season in 2009, and then People Places Things in 2015. And... He has a TV movie coming with Jessica Williams. So he here. he wrote okay. this script with Jessica Williams yeah, in, mind. in mind, and, and halfway think, through writing, he met up with her, and that kind of helped. Is that and that was because she was in that people places things right, film okay. that he did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he obviously has a, a massive um, liking for her work. Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think obviously he 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 sees her as a, a good comedic presence and and the energy that she brings on screen and. And he obviously knows how to write a script for her. So um, I found that quite interesting. I found him quite interesting. I'm going to keep a real close eye on him and, and his work going forward as well. And yeah, good. Um, maybe check out some of the other films that he's done. Mm, interesting. Critical consensus for this one was pretty positive. Pretty positive. It was very positive. 88% on Rotten Tomatoes. Was it really? On 88. <laughs> on 57 reviews. So it's not like it was only like 10 know, or something. That's not bad that, for yeah. Rotten Tomatoes. That's very positive for um, a lot of reviews. 57 reviews for Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Significant yeah. for And the audience sat on 66% on 776. Taken 66. Which is pretty pretty similar to IMDb and Letterboxd, which was 6.5 out of 10 and very then 3.2 out of 5. So, yeah, kind of sitting around that 6.5 mark out of 10. And, and yeah, enough, enough. You know what? More more people on Letterboxd have rated say, this than IMDb. I was about to check that because I'm like, sure, I've written that that, that, that down wrong. There was no. Nah. Yeah, there was more ratings on Letterboxd. I was punching stuff into my calculator and was getting really excited when <laughs> yeah. I thought it was going to beat it. And it, and it just tipped over. So it's a bit over 5,000 on each, on each one. So I often think of Letterboxd as a little bit more of a, a filmy kind yeah, of audience. Whereas yeah. IMDb is really generic. Everyone who, who consumes movies in any way is familiar with IMDb. Yeah. They don't necessarily log in and rate their films on it. 
Um, but Letterboxd... TV as well as IMDb as well. So true. more familiar for everyone because they can look at movies and TV. Very true. Letterbox, I think you need to go out of your way to really be a, a somewhat of an avid film fan to, to get involved with. Which we all are. So, which makes me Letterbox. think that... Makes, and the fact that there's 56 reviews um, on Rotten Tomatoes makes me think this is more of a film for a film audience, which doesn't necessarily think that on the surface of the film. Mm. But obviously, they all got behind it. Yeah, I, I agree with the letterbox thing. And then the other day, I had an experience where it like totally flipped me because usually it's like, yeah, it's on on par with what you think you know critics and and film lovers would sort of like together. And we, like, my wife has this rule where if it's anything <coughs> under three, she won't watch it on off letterbox. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, you have told me that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so dogs purpose we watched the other night. Okay. And it was like three point something or other, and. Wow, I, it's pretty new though, isn't it? Not, not the so. There's a new sequel that's coming out, but it's uh, like 2017 or something. So it's I a couple of years old, and so like, I couldn't believe it was it. bad. We're yeah, saying, it wasn't yeah, we're saying it was bad. It wasn't very good. <laughs> so yeah, but I do that's, agree in general. But yeah, yeah that, that yeah. just I was like, oh, thinking of that this week, it really, really did. <laughs> you got a wrong movie yeah. audience. <laughs> yeah, I've had a few movies like that where they've had a pretty yeah, high score. Sorry, and that happens. Yeah, that yeah. happens. Yeah. So this one had a bit of a cinema release before it hit Netflix. So it debuted at Sundance. Debuted at Sundance, yeah. In January 2017. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then it debuted at, oh, it didn't debut, but it opened at the San Francisco International Film Festival in April. Okay. Then it played at the Sundance London Festival in June. And this is all 2017. Yeah, 2017. Yeah. And then in um, later in June 2017, it played at the BAM Cinema Fest, which I'm not too sure about it. And then it had a cinema release in Portugal. Hmm. In July, before opening on Netflix, so mm-hmm. did the rounds this yeah. So Netflix acquired the rights four days before it premiered at Sundance, yeah. the original Sundance. So yeah, Netflix have obviously um, yeah. So they had the rights yeah. and then they distributed it. Yeah. Mm. So they they got the rights after it had its um, no, before what, it no no but they had it had the volunteer screen. Oh yeah. So there's a volunteer screening prior to. Sundance, Sundance, which I get it, all the people who volunteer to work at Sundance, mm. got to see it. And there was a whole heap of buzz off the back of that. And then a little bidding war started and they acquired it for just over $3 million, I believe. So yeah. um, that's interesting that they, I didn't, I missed out about all the cinema releases. Yeah. And, and it was nominated for three awards at the 2018 Black Reel Awards as well. Yeah. So, mm. too. Yeah. so outstanding actress for Jessica Williams, who was beaten by Natalie Paul. From Crown Heights. Outstanding independent feature, Jim Strauss, but that was also beaten by Crown Heights. And outstanding breakthrough performance, female, which Jessica Williams was beaten by Tiffany Haddish from Girls Trip. Cool. Interesting. I always want to know when they don't win. Yeah. I want to know who who beat it. And this was obviously filmed New York City, in and around. Yes. It's quite obvious from a lot of the, the scenes. Mostly because Jim Strauss is from New York and he's got two kids and he's like... It's nice and easy to yeah, <laughs> stay in New York. It's, it's home. Um, New York's always changing, so he's got this endless evolving set. All right, well, before we get into the the nitty-gritty of the film, what are, what are our early thoughts, MJ? What do you, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of liked diving back into that cliche rom-com structure. And I think mainly just because I hadn't really seen much of this formula recently. Nothing groundbreaking. Um, but I was comfortable with the predictability of the formula. Um, and the main thing I really liked about it was the internal journey that Jessica goes on. Um, and there a couple of nice little nuggets to take out of things. You know, when you when you watch a film and you think about your own life, there's enough there that it was, wasn't just mind-numbing. So I thought it was all right. I, I quite enjoyed it. Hmm, cool. Hey, Doc. I didn't really like it too much. Um, I struggled getting into it. I, one of the reasons I didn't like it, I really didn't like the character of Jessica. She annoyed me and just not liking her just meant I didn't really get into the film. And I mean, in general, I'm not really a rom-com guy, but you know, doing this, I'd, I'd try to go in with an open mind, but just, <clears> yeah, I, I, I couldn't really, really connect and like Jessica and it made me struggle throughout enjoying the film. Yeah, it definitely took, I took my time getting to like her. I don't think yeah. you're supposed to like her at the start. Yeah. Either. Like that first scene with her on that date, yeah. Like she's super dislikable. Yeah. Is that word dislikable? But. Yeah. And even a lot of the way, like, she was treating the the one kid yeah. who she was yeah, trying to get on the thing. For sure. What, uh, a lot of that, I mean, we'll talk about later in the scenes, but yeah, just a lot of that stuff, I was just, I, I don't like you. I'm, I'm not rooting for you to, you know, be happy or succeed. So, yeah, that, that really hampered my ability to get in and actually like the film. Yeah. I, I wasn't that big a fan of it. Yeah. So, I'm similar to Heath. The... 
I was doing a bit of reading on this and I, they referred to this as a hangout film where you get to know Jessica and not worry about what's going on around her. So it's, and they compared it to like Tarantino sort of films where it's more about you hang out with these characters and sure. enjoy what the characters mm-hmm. are up to. But I wasn't a massive fan like Hita because I couldn't quite believe the overconfidence of her. And yeah. I had this feeling like, they wanted or needed us to believe that she was warm and fuzzy on the inside, but she had this exterior that just wasn't matching what was going on. And I just couldn't deal with that. Yeah. I found her really jarring, but to be honest, um, I guess we can kick into Jessica. Yeah. Let's not yeah, do it. So it. Yeah. I, I really did dislike her at the beginning yeah. and I, I can't see a world where we were supposed to like her on that yeah, first day. Yeah, that's fair enough. You know, she was really pretentious. And she was. I was like, who is this? Like, don't, you're not, you're not the, the title character, are you? She like, was a bitch. Like, I just plain and simple. I thought she was a bitch. <laughs> um, but I actually think that she had a really good character arc. Um, her best discovery being that you don't need to change who you are just because on the surface things aren't working. So I actually don't think she necessarily changed her beliefs and things that drove her, but she changed the way that she let them get to her. Um, If you love something and if you're passionate about something, then that's cool. If you don't think it's bringing you joy, then it doesn't mean it's not working because you just got to look and, and look at it differently. I think the best part of that was when she goes to her sister's bridal shower or baby shower. Baby shower. Yeah. Um, and I just, I, I love the symbolism of this jumpsuit, right? Where she's like, I love this jumpsuit. And she gets in there and mm-hmm. everyone's like, why? Or she's like, why are you wearing that jumpsuit? It looks ridiculous. And then at the end, she's wearing the jumpsuit and the little girls, it's like, hey, that's mm-hmm. a cool jumpsuit. Mm-hmm. Whereas all these things that Jessica had in her head, She's like, oh, this isn't working. This isn't working. It was working, but she was looking at it the wrong way. You know, she was thinking like, I want to get into theatre. It's like, well, you are, you know, you're teaching these kids and that's as fulfilling as anything you're going to do. Yeah. So I, I just liked that ability for her to uh, learn about herself without having to change herself. But, you know, feel freedom in the decisions that she's making are the right decisions anyway. Um, that was really cool and that was something that you don't normally see in a film and I, I enjoyed that so I, and it was a character journey in the end yeah um, I, I get what you're saying about her being jarring and, and just being a real pain but I think you know she does she does get better at that but without any drastic changes and that's kind yeah. of cool yeah should, yeah should definitely um, a strong independent type character which Obviously, we don't see a lot of on the screen, I guess, like that with, as a main role, main female, black protagonist who is happy or, I'm sorry, not happy, but does things how she wants to do them, mm-hmm. I guess. She's got a stage. She's confident. Though, yeah. Like, yeah, like she's confident yeah. and confident Larger in than what she's yeah. doing. Yeah. And maybe that's just because we haven't seen enough, I haven't seen enough films that are like that. And maybe that's why I just couldn't connect with it because I'm like, yeah, it's, like, it's interesting yeah. that you say like what, you know, why you so where the arrogance comes from. And I don't quite understand that. Cause that's fair. Like yeah. mm. I reckon if you watch this again and you can understand where she's, you know, you understand more about her and you understand where she ends up. You'd probably watch it again a little bit differently because you would sort of understand her. Um, not saying that you probably want to chuck it on again. Yeah, probably, probably not something I'm going to watch but again. I, 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 but I see what you're saying. Definitely. I do think that would probably help because she yeah. just comes on stage, on stage, on screen, and she just like bang in your yeah. face. Here yeah. I am. I, I, I didn't, I didn't hate this film. Like I didn't hate the film at all. Uh, just that that character. Uh, yeah, I just I don't know. I I just couldn't 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 get her. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it definitely took me a while, and I still didn't particularly like her that much. But I did the first date and the the, the first, sorry the first scene on that date with that guy from Tinder juxtaposed with her first date with Boone where she's not necessarily having a great time. She doesn't really want to yeah, be there. But she doesn't she's, care. It's more just kind of chatting. And, and she's smiling and, and yeah. they talk about all like that. She's honesty. entertaining him. Like, I guess, or like she's, she's willing to listen to him talk as well, whereas the other one, like, she wasn't. It was just yeah. about, this is my agenda of what's happening tonight. Whereas with Boone, it was more like, yeah, like, she seemed, we're just going to chat. She seemed you know? comfortable. And yeah. I, I like that setting up almost, you know, like, mm-hmm. that thing, it was a classic you know, meet cute. And mm-hmm. this film has a lot of really structured rom-com elements to it. And what did I, you think of Boone? I thought it was a really oh, great role for, I like Boone. Boone. Yeah. You know, he's, he's a pretty funny guy. His character was very funny. I mean, especially contrast to me not liking Jessica. I really enjoyed when he was on screen and I enjoyed watching him. He does awkward, charming really well. Really well. Yeah. yeah. So this was a lot more like his role in Bridesmaids. 
a lot less like his role in mascots that yeah. we saw on Netflix recently. I, yeah, I, he, it was that comedic relief, but I, I found him a little hit and miss as well. And I kind of, I don't know, he looked a little bit too old for her. He, he looked like, quite they old. They definitely didn't yeah, seem like yeah, a right match. He looked quite old, but I, I thought it was funny. I, I, I enjoyed every time he was on screen. It was really like clever him. when they introduce him. The very first time you see him is when, when she says, like, there's nothing worse than watching a man eat. And then yeah. it just cuts to him just like... <laughs> he's just eating it. It was just the perfect, like, here's this guy who's a bit of a loser, who's going to be funny, and I, it just set him up perfectly. I really liked it. I like the fact that he was quite strong-willed, and even though he seemed a little bit weak and pathetic at times, he did want to protect himself as much as possible. Yep. Like, that ability for him to be like, no, no, let's take this slow, because he knows he's going to hurt himself, but he's still too weak to just be like, oh, you know, bugger it. I'm, I'm, let's go upstairs. Yeah. Like, there was still something about him that you believed he was, um, you know, he wasn't just this character thrown yeah. into Jessica's life for Jessica's sake. Yeah. He, he had his own life. It wasn't just a complete, like, a pushover kind of thing just yeah. to be there to whatever she wanted. He was, yeah, he was still, he was an in, 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 independent as well. He and, was. Yeah, had his own thing going on. Obviously, he had his own struggles to work with. And he was always, yeah, like, willing to put that first as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I was disappointed with the role of Damon because I, I love Lakeith Stanfield and I, I don't know I didn't even write him down he was that I, I wrote I nothing role and, <laughs> yeah. and that I was like I was expecting when, when, so when much yeah, when he's billed as like I'm like oh sweet he's in this film and then it's like oh the only no. time you see him is when he's a figment of Jessica's imagination. imagination. So that's why I was like, I don't know this character Ex- at all. Except the start. Except the, the first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I said the first he wasn't a figment. No, no, he was really at the end too when he was really Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was dead. Like, that's all fine. But it, yeah, I was I wasn't expecting that. So yeah, that. him and her friend Tasha, I thought they were both. So, Tasha was the classic cliche. Yeah. I don't have a story arc at all about myself. Yeah, exactly. To serve yours. Yeah, <laughs> yep, absolutely. My my favorite character. Oh, sorry. Did you want to? Talk no, about she was fine. She was like, fine. she was yeah, what you would expect yeah. in a rom com. Yeah. My favorite character was that Chandra. Chandra. Chandra, the kid. Chandra yeah, yeah, Chandra. Chandra. Um, sh- the way I read Jessica, I thought that um, Chandra was the only character that really allowed her for the growth by. Her not going to that excursion, that was, to me, that was the turning point. And I just thought she did that really well. And then the, you get to see her go to the house to apologize to her. And I just thought that was where that, that change happened. And I really liked it. Definitely. Yeah. Really clear. Yeah. I found the relationship between both of them a little bit awkward and yeah. somewhat misplaced. Like yeah. it didn't, it yeah. didn't work. Um, but I think the idea was that Jess's own intensity and lack of direction was kind of being forced upon Chandra, Chandra, yeah. Chandra. Yeah. yeah, Chandra. Um, maybe you got the idea that Jess like saw herself in in yeah. Chandra. Yeah, um, but, trying to get her along to do the things with yeah. her, and she just didn't necessarily want to do them. Yeah. And yeah, and but, she sort of admits that when she goes to apologize and says, "Look, yeah. the same thing happened with my family. I had to pick which parent I wanted to be with." Blah blah mm. blah. So. Yeah. I, I, to your point, I think she was an important device for Jess to invoke change in the way she acts, not the way she thinks, because the way she thinks was that was probably the main thing that I liked about Jess is. The way she thinks didn't change, no. but the way she acted and the way she perceived things changed. Um, but the whole relationship still felt a little unrealistic and a little bit weird. Yeah, I, I thought it was weird. But you're right, I like yeah, the interaction. Was weird. Yeah. Mm. Uh, any other characters? No? No. Uh, no, there wasn't much else. Any other actors that we could have seen okay for this role? Oh. I don't know if you could recast this. It's a different sort of film. Well, that's the thing. Here's a film that was written for Jessica the Williams, Williams, right? Yeah. yeah. Chris O'Dowd, Chris O'Dowd was, was perfect. I, think, I agree. For that like, character. That's, it fit that's perfectly. Exactly who. And I think. Didn't no one else really. Yeah, yeah, no one else really didn't matter who, who else was in the movie. So. It was only those two. All right. What are some scenes that stood out? Hater, go. Um, I didn't have too many, but one of the funny ones I thought when um when Boone's on the phone with Jessica and he's working out the front of his ex's house and he falls over the rubbish bins. He says on the phone, oh, oh, "I did some trash cans fall over at your end." <laughs> <That's Yeah. right. laughs> Very funny. I really enjoyed so that. Specific. Yeah. What's that sound? <laughs> some trash cans falling over. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I liked um when, when Jessica kept having the daydreams about Damien and he kept dying. They were funny, especially when the piano fell on him. Quite. I think I burst out laughing when the piano fell on him. And, yeah. and, and rash. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah I've, that's the only standout I've got are the dream sequence. Yeah, the dreams were really, really right funny. Um, and I actually really did enjoy the bits of scream metal playing at the baby shower. <laughs> Just they had those little snippets and the scream I started coming out. I'm like, yeah, that's funny. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was all yeah. I had though, yeah. I liked the scene as well with Chris O'Dowd's character where he was like um, talking to his ex-wife's 
partner and oh, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. just yeah. pretty much turns around and goes I don't care and then walked off that wasn't bad that was kind of annoying because that was showing there is a world outside of Jessica that's the only little bit because yeah. you're like oh what's going to happen here are they going to try and reconcile and you can understand that situation because the bloke who comes out he's been pretty decent about everything right yeah. like he's he been really nice about yeah, it yeah he handled it really well and then you didn't expect you know Boone to tell him the F off or whatever, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. which was still kind of cool as well because Boone is is battling with this as well exactly so, yeah. yeah you're right that was good scene I have quite a few. I, in general, I, I like the way that she put her rejection letters on the wall. When I saw that straight away, I was like, ooh, okay, you're winning me over here. I like your drive. I like your yeah. passion. I like your persistence. Um, I did like when she was on the phone to her best friend and she's like, are you masturbating? Because the whole time I'm like, <laughs> I think that girl's masturbating. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, I think she's masturbating while she's on the phone. And then when she just says, Next time I call you and you're doing it, just don't answer. <laughs> then she was kind of like, oh, okay. But I thought that was just a logical thing to do, just really? to not yeah. answer the phone. Oh, I better answer the phone. Yeah. Yeah, I won't stop what I'm doing. And quite, like. the, I didn't like the... No, no, it's not that I didn't like that scene. I didn't like the split screen when, whenever they had a phone conversation. Oh, uh, okay. That just... I, I don't know. You, you don't need to see both people talking and reacting at the same time. Sure. Okay, you, but one of them's masturbating, though. You <laughs> for that one scene. But then it happened whenever she was on the phone to yeah. burn as well. Just visually was... Yeah, didn't yeah. like it. Um, I like the the ice skating or the skate sorry the skating scene after that mess in Ohio with her family and in fact I, I kind of just liked every time that we saw Jess and Boone together because she just seemed happier with, with him than other parts of her life um, but during that scene specifically she, she says to Boone talking about um, theatre saying I don't know if it loves me back because shit, how much you, you must love theatre. Hmm. And she goes, I don't know if it loves me back and that scares the shit out of me. And I, I really like that idea that someone who's so passionate about something starts to doubt themselves because they're like, yeah, I give everything to this, but what, what what's it giving me back? Mm-hmm. Um, and that goes to the, to the whole point where she didn't realise how much she was getting back from theatre by doing what she was doing. And then obviously things turned around for her, but really, really poignant line for me. So I... Um, I definitely thought that was my favourite part of the film. Yep. And the final thing that I like, which I mentioned before, is about her just the, the whole um, symbolism of her wearing that jumpsuit. Um, and I liked the fact that she was wearing it at the end. Um, she was being herself all along and she never actually thought she was fitting in, but she was. Um, just like the fact that she was actually being successful all along, but never got the recognition for it. So um, that one really stuck with me as well. Cool. Hmm. Nice. Did you need that TED Talk lady to... Did anyone... Did you watch that TED Talk? I did not. No. I didn't. No. <laughs> I did I was Google, tempted. I, was I tempted. did Google that lady though. Yeah. Like, because she's real. real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of hope she was. Yeah. All right. What, what didn't we like, Peter? Oh, we've spoken a bit about before. The opening bar scene. Uh, there was a bit of an awkward and weird start to get to know the character. And I, that, that kind of like... That didn't start with the movie well for me, that opening scene. I just yeah. didn't like that whole thing the two lines from that scene mm. that I didn't like where um, she said I'd rather have my period for a thousand years mm. <laughs> or the guy that she was saying should have told her to take her panties off and smell them yeah I'd rather have <laughs> my period for a thousand years is a little bit funny yeah, yeah okay no, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> wasn't a good scene <laughs> Keep um, I, I, I didn't like the uh, so that when when Jessica's um, talking to Chandra's mum and asking, you know, why she can't go on the trip with her and why does she have to go with her dad? And the whole time that conversation, I'm just thinking in my head going like, where are your boundaries? Like, mm. mind your own damn business. This is, you know, kind of a family thing. You're going to spend time with the dad just, and she was kind of pushing it going, no, she's going to spend time with the dad. Come with me. I'm just thinking like, no, you, you've got to have some boundaries here. Like, yeah. just leave her to be with her family. And, and then later on when it was kind of like, she might, uh, Chandra might go with her and then she's like, oh, she might go to six phase because the rest of her family's going. And she just cracks the shits with her, like, yeah. for, for not going with her. I'm like, y- you're just being a bitch here to her. Like, she wants to go with her family to six flags instead of going with you. Like, that's okay. I just, yeah, didn't like that for whole sure. interaction with her. And yeah. yeah, I didn't like that she was taken out on a kid, but then yeah, exactly. I liked, I did like the follow up where she went in and apologized. It was a good follow up, yeah, but just at the time, I just remember just thinking, just no, like, you, you can't be saying this to her. This is really bad. Yep. Yeah, I, yeah, I was exactly the same um, with that. I, I wasn't a massive fan of the follow on from that opening bar scene where um, you just see her dancing through the flat and on the rooftop. Oh, the opening credits. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It just it was weird. They hired a choreographer for that. I, did, I didn't like her just throwing the guy's laundry oh, out. Yeah. Again, that goes to a bit of you know you think you're too start, good. Yeah. yeah, just throwing it out. I'm like, come on, that's just unnecessary. Yeah, I, I <laughs> didn't bother. Uh, 
I like when she like stopped and ate a sandwich in the middle of it. Was it a sandwich or something? Peanut butter and jelly, wasn't it? She yeah. had it sitting on the, the camera, looked at it, and then you see a scoff in her face. Uh, like I said, like Boone, I didn't mind him. I actually, these, I should have put these in the things I liked. I, there were two jokes that he made that I liked. I liked that he uh, joked about Hamilton being the only thing he knew about theatre. I thought that was funny. I had a bit of a gig at that. And then, like, he randomly, just out of nowhere, goes, oh, yeah, Jessica, I'm good at cunnilingus. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's really <laughs> weird. So, so out there. Out there. It kind of goes back to that opening bar scene where she yeah. says the guy, like, you yeah. should have just made a move on me straight away. Yeah. yeah. Well, at least she was telling the that's truth because yeah. she kind of is okay yeah. with that. Uh, I thought that... <laughs> When she like she smelled the Vicks vapor up to, oh, to yeah. remind her of Damon, mm. I was like, oh, that's... Who, who smells like that? Like, it must be like I know, just sick all the time. I don't know. It was weird. And um, the last thing that I wasn't a massive fan of was um, Jessica brought her friend Tasha to the class for that improv game. Oh, cool. Mm. It just went way too long. I oh the improv, yeah, the improv. The improv. It just yeah. it was. She's like, oh, I brought it my friend along for an improv game. I'm just sitting there going. Yeah, okay. The kids yeah, don't they, really care. Yeah, they went around for a, yeah. Yeah, a bit too long with their zombie kind of thing. Yeah. There's a thing similar to that when they had the scene in the theatre where they... The yes and game. Yeah. That was, like, fine, but it had absolutely nothing to do with anything else. Mm-hmm. And then the scene ended and then there was no other relevance to it. Yeah. So, that was another thing. I was like, why Why is this scene in here? Are you just telling me? Uh, are they just trying to include the friend more? Like, no, nah, yeah. Was, I, I feel like it was time? just like, just making sure you know that she's a teacher. Yeah. And she's here like, yeah. <laughs> um, I also um, had the thing with Chandra, which, which you spoke yeah. about. I, I didn't like, in general, her use of the word dope. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but she's dope. She knows she's dope. I feel like in the last 20 minutes, she said it like six times. Especially the worst one was when Boone said, I really like you. And she goes, yeah, Boone, of course you do. I'm freaking dope. Like, yeah, oh. well, it wasn't great. <laughs> it wasn't great. <laughs> um, and that was basically, I, I didn't like or dislike. I just thought it was a little bit weird that Chandra was on the plane at the end. Like, that was a bit of a weird... Oh, it was a weird question. So Boone wasn't on the plane, nah, was he? Nah. He just bought the three of them round trip tickets to London <laughs> and didn't go himself. With his frequent flyer points. Yeah. That, that, that's what I thought happened. That, that's kind of weird. I think you're supposed to think that he's there because they got that spare yeah, seat in the yeah, middle. Yeah. And then Sean then yeah, yeah. jumps on there like, like, huh? Oh, no, Boone's just such a nice guy. He did this for them. Yeah, why are you taking a child like who's not your own? <laughs> yeah, I mean, one, it's a writer's weekend's one thing. But, yeah. You know, where were they going? Why is your best friend going? Well, why wouldn't Boone go? Yeah. Like, it's his frequent flyer miles. That yeah, was a bit weird. I don't know. Yeah. All right, well, what was the film trying to say? What were some themes, some ideas, some messages? Well, I'm really big on this whole growth and self-discovery thing, and I've been harping on about that quite a bit. Yep. Um, but I, I like the fact, as I said, it's not necessarily as we, we know it. Like, there's growth and discovery in, in almost every film and every character arc has it, but mm-hmm. she didn't have to change what she was doing. She just had to change how she saw herself and thought about herself and... Um, and that's a really cool message. I like, you know, if you if you're stuck in a rut and you're like, man, why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? It's like, well, maybe not what you're doing is is isn't. Sorry, maybe what you're doing isn't the problem. Yeah. Maybe it's the way you're thinking about yeah. what you're getting out of it. Yeah. Really cool message. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. I, I sort of had to like being complicated is okay. It didn't matter that she had all these well as well insecurities as well. Obviously, and Boone, you know, makes a comment to her that you're good at hiding it, but that's fine. Like as long as she works out how to deal with those things. Yeah. So yeah, the, I like the, it was sort of like a colorblind film too like it was a very mixed cast it's very and true it didn't matter one little bit yeah, nah, at yeah all, very true yeah, which was good it like you have white people you have black people it didn't matter yeah it's just nice to not have to worry about i mean there's there's scenes where you know they're walking through her area where she lives and they make some sort of comments but other than that it didn't really that's a really good point i like that and hopefully we get to see a lot more of that yeah, yeah hopefully there was, was good a bit about the commitment too and being honest yep they spoke about honesty, honesty quite a lot. Was, yeah. That was really important to both of them. Yeah. Um, and that was what stood them apart when they first had that conversation. That's mm-hmm. when things opened up when he said, yeah. like, well, I love being honest. And she's like, all right, good. Let's be honest. Yeah. Done. And then all of a sudden they clicked. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, living life too. She was always telling the kids to be themselves, keeping their minds open. And she sort of did this through theater. Like it's not a dead art form. It like transforms life. So mm-hmm. she's trying to, while she transformed her, she was trying to transform these ones of these kids as well. Yeah. 
Uh, her nose ring bothered me. Did it bother anyone else? I don't like that like yeah, hook nose hook. ring. Oh, it didn't didn't bother me. Mm, it's the first yeah. note I wrote down. Yeah, <laughs> it was like a nose I don't ring. like a nose ring. Really gonna bother me? Yeah, it didn't bother me too much, I guess. Last thing I had too was um sort of questioning the system too. She made a few comments throughout the film, like you know she said marriage is an outdated yeah. construct, and then she made that picture book at the yeah. baby shower, which was the ABCs and of t- t- talking to the lady at the baby shower who just had no idea what she was talking yeah. about, just not conforming. Yeah. It was quite progressive. She was quite progressive. Yeah, and you know was. what? I, yeah. I only noted that sort of halfway through the film and onwards, how mm. progressive she was yeah. and how strong she was in those beliefs. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think there was an element of um, moving on because that was probably the initial part of the film is she wanted to get over her ex-boyfriend. And the same for... And um, same for Chris O'Dowd. Same for Chris O'Dowd's character yeah. too, yeah. So they use each other as the wrong word, but they, they relied on each other to help them get through that. And then eventually, as a viewer, you kind of forget that's what they're doing. Um, and they do that through that social media following quite well. It's like, yeah, it's let's reverse cool. the roles and yeah. Yeah. Um, the only other thing that it does touch on is, is the whole idea of dysfunctional families and family hardships. Yeah, really blood actually, in that really scene good. where she's talking about visualizing sitting in the back seat of your car. Mm. Like the puppy dog that you want. Exactly. Yeah. And she's talking about her family, but then the kids are relating it to their own family. And mm. this is a really big probably relatable theme for so many yeah. people and I like the fact they touched on it the way they did they yeah. didn't give it a heap of oxygen but I thought it was even good like in it was a scene I didn't like but when she's talking to Chandra's mum and her mum's talking about how they've gone through all this all these divorce lawyers and how much time and energy it's spent mm-hmm. and it's finally done and yeah making it you know, showing how it was such a big ordeal as well yeah mm-hmm. exactly and you don't necessarily understand yeah. what everyone else is going through to get where they are mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. more to it than just a rom-com <laughs> Definitely. So, <laughs> what did we take away from the film? It was all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I like the message and, and the slight subtlety in it. I think that, you know, you have to think a little bit about the message. Um, I think the comedy and romance isn't all that compelling, but the cliche framework helped the film work that you could just rely on these cues that you know are going to happen and go, okay, this is the meet cue. Okay, this is where they have their fight. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Like, yeah. it, it, it kind of helped it. Pretty just standard. Move it along. What was yeah. happening, yeah. But the message for me, I really like the message. Mm. Yeah. So we like to work out if we've uh, jumped on IMDb to check out any actors or actresses or look anything up. Did anyone jump on and board this film? I jumped on for Damon, the ex, with Keith Stanfield. Yeah. From what you said before, I feel like I should know more of. Send Castle? Hey? He was in, Send- he was in War Machine. War Machine. Which I didn't I did, even realise. Was was but he was was he Oscar nominated last year? Was he? He was in Get Out. He was in he was, Get Yeah. He was in Get Out. He's in Sorry to Bother You, though. Okay, yeah. Well, the, the one I... Because I, I, I was watching, and I'm like, I know you. I'm like, who the hell are you? Yeah, he's from Get Out. Yeah. And then I was looking at IMDb, and I'm like, oh, you're in War Machine. Yeah. I don't even notice him in War Machine. But yeah, the one he I saw, I was like... black guy that, was, yeah, that we spoke heaps about. Did we? Okay. We did speak about him a lot. Well, then at the time, I didn't remember at when I was time, watching. At the time, he was my favorite. I spoke about him being my favorite character. He was the, the one that and shot the rocket and, and then I was like crying. crying. Ah, yeah, yeah, that guy. He yeah. was the one that same guy? Yeah. Who was, ah, there we go. He was questioning why we're here. Yeah. Okay. And then why we're here. Well, yeah. I'm looking at him here going, you're the guy from Get Out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't remember it from War Machine. He's a great actor. He's good. Mm. Um, I didn't go on IMDb, but I went on Google to find out how tall Jessica Williams was. And she's 183 centimeters, so that's six foot, I think. Yep. That's and cool. I think she references her height like three times mm. after I'd already Googled it. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I have to. But yeah, she just seemed really tall. Mm. I didn't jump on, but I, I did think Chris O'Dell was much better in this than Mascots. Oh, that's, that's all I had to say. <laughs> that was a crappy role. Yes, he was. In Mascots. That's a crappy movie. But that was such a bad <laughs> role for him. It was such a bad movie. Because this is, do you remember Bri- Bridesmaids? Every single role in that movie was bad. <laughs> in Bridesmaids, Chris O'Dell is a very similar to role to this. Mm. And... He gets it. He gets it right, all right? So let's just keep giving him the shots. You watch the IT crowd? I've only seen Chris no, He's great in the IT yeah. crowd. He's fantastic. All right. Do we have any questions from the film? I thought of one just as we were talking. Yeah. Uh, if you had kids, would you like them to go to Jess as a drama class? Well, it was, it was sort of like a community drama. So it wasn't like a, mm. a related to a school or anything. No, no. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But no, still- no, I'm, that's, I'm just trying to put context behind it. Like... I yeah, guess, sorry. They're yeah. not just going to draw that teacher for school. It's a choice to send yeah. them there. Um, if the, if your kid's into theatre, then yeah. or are you doing it saying based on you know, based on her? Would you would you want her teaching your kids? Yeah, I don't. Know. Well, no, I don't care. Yeah, I'd be fine with it. Cool. I agree. So I love just got to work in the children's chair. <laughs> 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 uh, I got a question. What do you think her plays were actually about? 
because we never found out what like That's what true. sort of plays that she was writing like what were they yeah I don't know I just would have liked to have had a little bit of context to what because they're meant to be you know I get the feeling they'd almost be like modern retellings of old Shakespeare or something, not Shakespeare right? necessarily but they'd have real progressive thinking yeah, in them and real progressive probably kind, a little kind bit of, of a feminist yeah. kind of yeah. tinge to it definitely yeah. get that kind of feeling yeah but yeah he smashed through reading them didn't he sure did other thing I was thinking there were a couple of scenes throughout where there was it was just Jessica in these random situations with no dialogue and the one that stood out to me was when she gets on the train and there's like the guy who's like taking up the seats and she just like looks at him like in a way oh, yeah. like as in move yeah I just couldn't work out how they fit like is it was it trying to show that she doesn't care what people think about her and she's just willing to do whatever she wants or I think there's an element of that but there's also an element of I think um, like she's happy just to speak up yeah because he was just spread his yeah, leg, he just spread his leg. Where, where some people might just go to find another seat or just stand yeah. she was happy to speak up and be like no 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 buddy that's not on yeah I go cool yeah, I think fine. it was more that but again she mm-hmm. does seem jarring and when she when you haven't met her you're like yeah. who is this I was just like because she's so confrontational to everyone else were. and mm-hmm. verbal about it it was just these scenes where she wasn't and I was like oh, uh, okay. yeah, I, was just, I think that's just her the way she does everything yeah she doesn't have to be verbal everything but she's always going to be um, outspoken alright we ready to wrap this up yeah I, I, award winning for food photographer is that a thing? Like, is that a real thing? That's just a joke about Instagram. Isn't yeah, it? that's what yeah. I mean. Like, were they just <laughs> taking a pretty piss? cool job if I, that was your job? But Award-winning food photographer. Do you get to like. eat the food as well. Yeah, I hope sure. so. <laughs> nah, just take a photo of and leave it. Um, I can't imagine there's much money in that. Surely. Yeah. It depends if you're sponsored on Instagram, isn't it? Yeah, people will be like, "Hey, come to my restaurant. Yeah, I'll yeah. Pay you." So we like to uh, give a rating for the films that we've watched. We give it a rating out of five, and then we add it all up to give it an overall uh, average for the Flix Forum podcast. Hita, give us your thoughts. So yeah, I, I struggled with this movie a bit. Um, I, it's, it's not the kind of film I normally watch, but I tried to go in with an open mind. However, the, the awkward opening scene and then the fact that I didn't really like the main character, I just struggled to get into it. Uh, I liked Chris O'Dowd, but aside from that, I just didn't think the movie was that good. Um, I gave it a two. Cool. MJ? Yeah, I found it a surprisingly easy film to watch. Um, Jessica, for me, went from jarring to palatable to commendable, which isn't a bad effort for a character to do in 85 minutes. Um, It clearly didn't blow my socks off, but I enjoyed it enough, I guess. Three stars. Nice. Uh, So I I didn't hate the film, but I didn't love it. I couldn't quite get into it, and I think if I connected more with Jessica... I may have taken more away from it and I finished it not quite knowing too much more about her than when the film started like realistically as a, a per, like I didn't know anything new really about her mm. uh, so I'm giving it a 2 out of 5 as well so you know what does that give us as an average out of 5 so I reckon that works out to a 2.33 out of five. Two point three three. Again. I worked that. I'm, I worked that out in my head before you press equals. That. I'm doing it on my in my head too. No, I know, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting good at figuring out what our three yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so enough. <laughs> we are on social media. We have Twitter. We have Facebook. We have Instagram. We are at Flix Forum. We are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Podbean, get everywhere. There, subscribe to us if you can. You've already found us already. So True. Thank you. So keep, if, even if you just found it because of this uh, film, try and listen to some of our other episodes too. That would be awesome. If you want to support us, so subscriptions and ratings uh, mean the world to us. They do. So we're going to chuck a question up on social media. And the question this week is, what do you prefer, stage shows or musicals? In the theme of, of Jessica liking theatre. Interesting. I think I like musicals more, to be honest. I'm not a musical kind of guy. I yeah. prefer a stage show. Yeah. I don't necessarily have a preference. preference. Yeah. I do love a good musical, but yeah. I don't. I do love a good stage show. If you had to pick one, though, well, it would depend on the show. Wow. Oh, <laughs> like uh, I loved Les Mis when it came out. Um, what's a show that I've seen? Harry well? Potter. Seen Harry Potter? Anyone seen no, Harry Potter? No, that's a, that is a great show. I really want to. It's so expensive. It is very expensive. Worth seeing though. (laughs) Worth putting the cash on it. All right. So next week we are watching the 2017 comedy Naked and it's directed by Michael Tides. No titties. Tides. 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 It stars Marlon Wayans, Regina Hall, Jonathan Rod Jackson, Scott Foley, Loretta Devine, 
Brian McKnight and Dennis Hasbert. So Brian McKnight. Brian McKnight. What a singer. <laughs> <laughs> Some classic uh, 90s. 90s or two th- early 2000s songs. I wonder if he's going to act in it or he's going to be 90s. Singing. Singing. 90s, yeah. So that's what we're looking at next week. Been good to Magic. catch up, even cool. though it's late. It's been yes. good. Let's all go to bed. Let's all go to bed. Hell yeah. All right. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. See you, boys. Bye.